the last session we have uh, begin our discussion on uh, the basic processing unit we have discussed about uh, how to fetch a word uh, of content from the memory how to store uh, the uh, store a word into the memory and uh, the execution of a complete instruction then we have uh, gone through the complete control sequence how to write the control sequence for uh, uh, by taking one example for the execution of a complete instruction so next uh, again we are going to um, the another content uh, that we are requ uh, required to discuss in this particular uh, basic processing unit is the execution of the branch instruction how the branch instructions can be executed in the program and what is the control sequence to execute uh, the conditional branch instructions and the unconditional branch instructions we know that the branch instructions can either be conditional or it can be unconditional okay so therefore the uh, branch instruction always tries to alter the contents of the pc it is going to replace the pc with a new uh, value new address which is the uh, branch target address okay so therefore a branch instruction replaces the contents of pc with a, a branch target address which is usually obtained by adding an offset uh, given in the branch instruction okay i repeat so the pc value it is been updated uh, it is been replaced with a uh, branch uh, target address so this branch target address it is uh, obtained uh, uh, it is obtained by adding an offset uh, x which is given in the branch instruction the offset x is usually the difference between the branch target address and the address uh, immediately following the branch instruction okay so therefore uh, we, it is important to note that pc will be loaded with a offset value okay so this is the background of uh, how the uh, um, pc is been updated with the branch target address okay so now here it is a uh, example of uh, unconditional branch instruction the steps illustrate uh, the execution of a complete branch uh, instruction uh, the uh, instruction branch instruction it is uh, taken as the unconditional branch okay so the first two uh, three steps are the same here we are going to uh, it is called as a instruction fetch phase followed by the uh, execution phase so as we have discussed in the previous case in the previous uh, uh, example so the first uh, the address of the uh, the address of the program counter the current uh, the program counter will be pointing uh, the ad uh, address will be holding the address of the current instruction uh, so therefore the pc value will be the pc value will be uh, loaded the pc will be holding the address of the current instruction so this pc value view will be, will be loaded into the MD, mar okay memory uh, address register and a read operation is said to be uh, initiated okay it a uh, read operation is said to be uh, it is said to be issued by the processor okay so parallelly what happens here as i have explained already select for why we are using this select for so this particular select for so as we have seen in the previous case in the previous uh, diagram um, this particular uh, so, uh, in the previous diagrams we have seen uh, while discussing the execution of a complete instruction so this is same the pc out mar in read select for add z in so what are these instructions now pc i told you pc program counter value it is been loaded into the mar memory address register okay and uh, this uh, read signal is been issued by the processor so when this is going to happen the particular uh, memory and the uh, memory uh, read operation is been issued memory uh, read operation is been issued okay in the first line so uh, along with that we are having select for that means to update the contents of uh, the pc which is uh, here uh, select Uh, the mux is uh, uh, here we are going to any make the mux to select the select four because uh, four has to be added to the contents of program counter and uh, the updated value okay 
So, here what happens uh, one of the value is the select 4 and uh, the new value whatever the particular other value it is via this particular B. So, the add operation will be carried out within the ALU and the resultant will be placed in Z ok Z register. So, whatever the contents of the updated value of this particular thing it appears uh, uh, updated value of the program counter appears in the Z. Uh, z out and that updated value it is again loaded into the program counter this the output from the z is given again back to the uh, updated counter value that is the pc in and what is this y in so when the pc value is updated the y uh, other input is being given into this particular y in okay so which is another input to uh, to the max and uh, which acts as another uh, input right ok. So, that is the reason why we give the uh, y in and wait for the memory function to get completed. So, these are the, the 1, 2, 3 steps uh, when uh, the mem uh, wait for the memory function to get completed. So, meanwhile what happens uh, the data that is there from the memory it uh, goes uh, it is arriving through the bus memory bus via the data lines into the MDR and the instruction from the MDR it is given into the instruction register. So, this is what it is going to happen right. So, here uh, in this particular uh, sequence that same thing is going to happen. So, 1, 2, 3 steps are there. So, what happens in steps 1, 2 and 3? So, these 3 steps are there for fetching the instruction ok. So, MDR out that uh, required instruction from as I explained from the uh, uh, from the memory from the uh, designated memory it will be loaded via the address lines memory address lines into the instruction register ok. So, these 3 lines lines 1, 2 and 3 it is uh, uh, these uh, 3 lines illustrate the fetch phase of the instruction. So, now uh, the particular instruction after the instruction is being fetched. So, we are going to this instruction is made available in the instruction register right. So, here what happens if it is a branch instruction the offset value it is the decode and uh, the decode circuitry here what uh, it is going to do it is going to derive the offset value x from the instruction register. So, that offset value x it is uh, been added the offset value x ok offset value x along with this particular y in ok. So, here we have selected another input y the updated value is already available here. So, this uh, y in it is added with uh, the uh, offset value and uh, the updated. So, now what happens our PC we are going to add x with the previous updated value whatever was the previous updated value. So, now this particular x is being derived from here ok. So, this uh, operation ok from where did we get this PC? This PC is uh, from this particular already the input is there here ok. Uh, when we look at the max for the if you are going to look at the ALU, the ALU here one of the input is already via the what you call uh, it is via A and another register another input is through B. So, one of the PC value is uh, available here and X value is available here and uh, the add operation is going to take place within the ALU and uh, our new particular what you uh, the target address uh, the updated value uh, the branch target address is been uh, uh, is been computed now and the resultant is placed in the Z in register ok. So, from the Z in again it is loaded back into the program counter uh, to see that our PC is loaded with the branch target address it is loaded with the branch target address. So, this is the way how the branch target address uh, this is the control sequence for the branch target address ok to load uh, the branch target address for a unconditional branch instruction right. So, next uh, what uh, there is a small change with respect to the uh, with respect to the conditional uh, a small change here. So, execution of a particular thing 
uh, for a conditional branch what is that minor thing we need to change here so in the particular conditional branch instruction uh, we need to check the condition codes before loading the new values into the uh, program counter okay so condition codes like zero flag negative flag so all these condition codes needs to be checked depending upon the resultant of the branch instruction for example here the branch on negative if the branch is less than zero branch or negative the offset field okay so here what happens an additional thing needs to be added here see what happens here in the step 4 we have to add this particular statement so offset field of ir out add in comma z in if i is if n is equal to 0 then end so what is this uh, n so this is the negative branch so if our value n is uh, not equal it is equal to 0 then the processor returns to the step 1 that means uh, we need not uh, uh, add here what happens we need not uh, uh, add uh, just uh, uh, load the pc go back to the step 1 in case if it is equal to 1 so then we have to perform the step 1 so what is step 1 here uh, sorry go back to step 1 so step 1 is this one okay we need not update the uh, value of pc so, so incrementally or sequentially we need to up, uh, update the value of the program counter but if the value of n is equal to 1 if the value of n is equal to 1 so in that case what we are required to do so if the value of uh, uh, n is equal to 1 so then what we have to do we have to implement the step 5 so what is step 5 you have to uh, step 5 in the step 5 we have to uh, up, uh, um, we have to compute uh, the branch target address and load our program counter with a new uh, branch target address so this is the modification that we are required to apply for a, a conditional branch statement so this if n is equal to 1 then end so i repeat if n is equal to 0 we have to go back to step 1 in case if our n value is equal to 1 so then we have to compute the step 5 execute the step 5 what does the step 5 imply so step 5 uh, tells that we have to uh, low uh, that we have to change our uh, replace the pc with a new content by adding the offset to the uh, uh, PC okay so to the program counter so this is all about the conditional branch instruction and the control sequence for it respectively right so this is the uh, one of the exercise problem I have taken from the uh, uh, exercise of the textbook Carl Hamacher write the sequence of control steps for single bus instruction okay so add num uh, comma r1 so here we are going to take the uh, this is the instruction add num comma r1 so the contents of the memory location num has to be added into the register r1 okay so it is a direct addressing mode so therefore we are required to write the complete sequence of steps for uh, executing this particular instruction okay so we shall go through the same uh, the example so here in the textbook uh, with the previous example what we have discussed was add uh, r3 comma r1 okay it was an example of uh, indirect addressing so here is an example for direct addressing so the control sequence it is going to vary depending upon the type of addressing modes that you are going to take but the first three basic steps remain the same which tells that the uh, instruction execution steps 1 to 3 are the instruction fetch phase and only the instruction uh, operand fetch phase may it is going to vary right so this again the same thing here for step 1 2 1 3 here what we are trying to do here in the sequence pc out mar in read select 4 add z in so all these steps so first what we are going to do the address of this instruction it is being stored up in the program counter so therefore the address of the, the uh, content of pc is loaded into the mar register okay and uh, after uh, uh, loading the content into the mar register a read signal is being issued to the memory by the processor and what happens uh, the program counter is needs to be updated by enabling the mux to select the 4 okay and uh, uh, what happens then add instruction 
function is being executed by the ALU. Okay, where does it get the input now? It is going to take uh, the input select 4 and uh, uh, another input uh, that is the uh, value. Okay, PC value is uh, available, pre previous PC value is available at B. So, uh, co constant 4, this 4 plus previous value of PC, it has been added and the updated value is stored here in Z in. Okay, so now what happens here Z in, uh, the co content from the Z register, again it will be stored in the program counter. Okay, the up now PC is said to be updated, program counter is said to be updated. So, now simultaneously another input is being selected by setting by in and because here um, uh, instruction read operation memory read is being issued, meanwhile here uh, wait for memory operation is being carried out, we are waiting for the memory function to be completed, right. So, now when once the memory read operation has been completed, the relevant instruction from the uh, uh, from the desired memory location will be copied into the memory uh, data register. Okay, the information from the memory will be loaded into the MDR register. Okay, from there again it will be fetched into the instruction register. So, therefore, until here it is called as the fetch phase. So, this is going to be called as the fetch phase, 1, 2, 3 is called as the fetch phase. So, now you can clearly see here, so num, num is again an instruction, uh, sorry it is an operand which needs to be fetched from the main memory. Okay, so it is uh, the operand is present in the main memory, it is present m, uh, n u m, it is a symbolic name of a memory location. So, one of the operand is present as a uh, it is present as a content of a memory location. So, therefore, we again load our PC, uh, we again load the, uh, okay. So, now if you are going to clearly understand the memory map, so then you are going to clearly know why we are using that second instruction. Imagine now this is the, uh, this is the area where the instruction is being stored. Okay, our program counter was, okay, so this is the instruction part and uh, here the number part is being stored. So, there is a data area is separate and the instruction part is being separate. In order to fetch the particular again uh, the operand from the memory, the operand from the uh, memory location because <coughs> here the memory here the operand is existing, one of the operand is existing as a memory, uh, as a memory location. So, we, the operand has to be fetched from memory. So, in order to again fetch the content from the memory, again we are trying to use this particular step PC out, MAR in read, select for add Z in to fetch the operand, okay. So, then Okay, so now uh, next uh, Z out PC in and wait for memory function to get completed. So now what happens again uh, this year uh, steps 4, 5, 6 it is uh, used to uh, fetch the operand, okay, fetch the operand num n u m. See here, uh, previously we have uh, uh, issued a memory read operation, uh, uh, memory read operation, so therefore One second. Okay, so here a memory read operation in the previous slide we have uh, seen a memory read operation. Here a memory read operation whenever a read is being issued in the previous uh, step, uh, the process uh, the uh, processor waits for the memory function to be completed. Okay, memory function complete, wait for memory function complete. So, here there is a read operation. So, uh, in the next step there is a wait for memory function to be completed. So, here what happens, uh, the PC is been, uh, uh, the PC value is been updated and the new, uh, uh, the operand value is been fetched. So, whatever the operand, uh, it is been fetched, so that is again <coughs> MDR out comma MAR in read. 
So now whatever the particular what happens here, operand fetch, uh, num is being fetched and uh, uh, this particular uh, uh, MDR out comma MAR in read. So now what happens uh, here, uh, the PC is said to be, uh, it is said to be updated to fetch the contents of uh, the operand. Okay. So here what happens, uh, MDR out, whatever the requested memory, it is being uh, uh, it is being uh, loaded into this particular M uh, MDR out and what happens here <coughs> again <coughs> a read operation is being initiated. See here what happens why we are going to load one of the output here, one of the uh, R1 because R1 is one of the output, uh, it is the operand here. We are loading one of the operand into the uh, Y in and wait for because uh, here again a read operation is there, wait for memory function uh, to be completed. Okay, so here what happens here MDR out. Okay, so uh, whenever we have issued the R1 out, so here the R3, uh, the num will be loaded. Uh, previously we have issued a read operation here the requested uh, num, the data from the memory location will be loaded here and uh, uh, this is one of the input to the MUX. Okay. So this is one of the input to the MUX. If you are going to take here the MUX, so here what happens, here select Y, it is one of the operand and uh, MDR out. So the another input e will be through via uh, MDR out. So this, this is the our B input. So whatever the data that comes from the MDR out is from the uh, what you call the from the processor bus it is getting loaded into the register B. Okay. So what is this now? It is nothing but our content memory location NUM will be loaded uh, using from this particular line and uh, this is already uh, y, y, y in. So Y in because your here is our R1. Okay. So this is our register uh, from whatever is entering through B is our num and whatever is entering through via Y in it is the R1. Okay. So therefore both the inputs are available, the add instruction is executed and the resultant is stored in Z1, Z in uh, register, temporary register and finally again R1 is the destination. So therefore we have to move the content from the Z out into the register R1 and this is the end of what we call and uh, finally end the sequence, right. So this is the control sequence for executing any problem, right. So this uh, practice uh, such a problem, so the in the exam usually the control sequence uh, right, uh, they will give an instruction and uh, it will be asked to write the control sequence for, a, for the given uh, instruction, okay. So uh, next uh, to uh, until now we have discussed all the contents of the basic processing unit. We have started a discussion with respect to the basic concepts. So then moving forward we have discussed uh, all the contents relating uh, uh, to the fetching a word, how to fetch a word from, mem uh, from the memory, how to store it, what is the sequence of events. So we have seen the timing diagram, we have seen the single data path. Uh, single data path here, how the particular or various components are connected and how the gating uh, input output gating uh, uh, of uh, registers and uh, further uh, we have seen the control sequence for executing a single instruction, the branch instruction, right. So all these are the contents what we have discussed in the previous two sessions. Now moving forward to the, mo uh, to the last part of the module 5. So next we are having what we call the basic processing, uh, we are having the concept of pipelining. Okay, so this pipelining, um, the concept of pipelining is said to be introduced next in the module 5. Okay, in the pipelining we need to study about the basic concepts, the role of the cache memory and the pipeline performance. So these are the few topics that we need to study in the pipelining. Okay. So this uh, first and the foremost, what do you mean by the concept of pipelining? So uh, usually uh, how do we improve the performance of the processor? So there are various ways to improve the performance of the processor. One way is to use a faster technology to build the processor and the main memory. Okay. So another is to alter 
first mechanism is I repeat we can use certain technology circuit faster circuit technology to build the processor and uh, the main memory arrange the second method is that arrange the hardware so that more than one operation can be overlapped in one stage at the same time for example uh, fetch phase can be uh, execution phase can be overlapped with execution phase of one instruction can be overlapped with a uh, fetch phase of another instruction so that is called as the pipelining we are going to uh, arrange the hardware so that more than one operation can be performed at the same time in the latter way the number of operations performed per, per second is increased even though the lapsed time need to perform any one operation do not change any way okay so now getting into the details of uh, this particular uh, pipelining it is a technique of decomposing a sequential process into sub operations with each sub operation completed in a designated segments okay so same operation whatever the instruction uh, different stages of an instruction are broken down into smaller operations um, where each operation is carried out individually in a different segment uh, hardware segment okay so the pipeline is commonly uh, it is referred it can be uh, it can be referred commonly to an assembly line operation a similar like uh, like assembly of car manufacturing or ca car manufacturing unit where we are having different parts assembled in manufacturing of different parts are going to take place parallelly and the assembly are going to take place in line okay so similar to the assembly line of uh, car manufacturing so this uh, uh, the pipelining is compared to the assembly line of car manufacturing okay so now uh, traditional concept of uh, pipeline we are going to take uh, some example uh, for a, a better understanding laundry example for example the particular there are four persons and brain kath and dev so each have one uh, these persons are going to have each are having one load of clothes to wash dry and fold so there are three tasks here one is the washing drying and the folding the clothes needed to be washed dried and folded so now for example all these th three tasks if they are executed in sequential one after the other so that means first the particular uh, sequential uh, see here first uh, the uh, process of um, each person there are four persons here the first person what is the uh, first uh, after all these uh, person person a when it is have washing drying and then folding when o, o, o in a sequential process it tells that when we are having one two and three process in line so next uh, what happens uh, after uh, the execution uh, uh, task completed by a only the b can proceed at time uh, 30 seconds right and uh, when the event was started at 6 pm okay so this is going to take some uh, minutes here after the completion by person a only b can take up the task and next c can take up the task and then after the completion of uh, uh, a b can take over the task and after the task is been completed by b c can take up and then d can take up the task right so this is called as a sequential laundry uh, sequential execution which takes 6 hours and 4 for 4 loads okay if uh, this uh, that means totally to execute uh, this particular uh, to complete the given task of uh, uh, washing drying and uh, folding by the four persons almost it is going to take 6 uh, hours okay for four loads so if we are going to apply the concept of pipelining here so the, the concept of pipelining so it is going to uh, the concept of pipelining tells that uh, here more than particular uh, right so here what happens so all while this is been drying the pipeline execution tells that while the 
this has been uh, this thing all the four a b c can uh, parallelly they can try to do the task but therefore it has been uh, parallel execution all a b c d can do the task uh, complete the task in uh, uh, parallelly so therefore while while this particular a person is trying to wash uh, or he has completed he can uh, while this has been drying he ca b can uh, initiate the process because when this is done washing immediately instead of waiting for the person uh, a person uh, uh, to get uh, all the clothes folded so instead of waiting till the end the process the person b can start immediately at the 40 seconds right so here the particular uh, here the particular instead of beginning here the process of uh, washing the clothes can be begin here only so similarly instead of waiting till the 30th uh, minute uh, here so here what happens this can be pushed here so like this what happens while this is drying this is getting uh, washed and while this is getting folded okay so this is folding this is washing and uh, the another one if you are going to take it is getting uh, dried okay so in this way we can try to overlap the execution of the processes so as to reduce the time so in the sequential execution for this analogy if it takes 6 hours if in a parallel execution it may take some 3 hours uh, in a pipeline execution it may take some 3 hours to complete the whole task so this is the uh, illustration for the pipelining concept right okay okay so next uh, to begin uh, what actually is the difference between the pipelining and the non pipelining uh, or the sequential uh, method okay so as i told you it is a technique of decomposing a sequential process into a sub operation and uh, next here we have discussed the analogy and here are some of the differences between a pipelining system and a sequential system or a non pipelining system right so here in the pipelining system multiple instructions are overlapped during the execution so here in a non pipelining system um the processes uh, what uh, like uh, decoding fetching uh, execution and writing are carried one after the other and in a sequential manner okay and uh, here many instructions are executed at a time in the pipelining system and there only one instruction is getting executed at the same time okay the efficiency of the pipeline depends upon the effectiveness of the cpu scheduler here it is not dependent on the efficient uh, on the cpu scheduler whichever uh, program is uh, ready to get executed so that one will be chosen in the sequential uh, system in the sequential uh, method of execution so execution time is comparatively less in the pipelining uh, system and whereas the execution time takes more time or uh, number of cycles are more comparatively in the sequential system or in the non pipelining system so these are the few differences between the pipelining and a non pipelining or the sequential system right so the idea of pipelining in computer the processor so we can try to break up a instruction single instruction into multiple phases or multiple stages so we can break up a single instruction into execute uh, into fetch execute phase into a two stage phase or a four stage fa uh, phase so that we are going to discuss now the idea of pipelining in computer the processor executes the program by fetching and executing the instructions one after the other okay so now what we are going to do let fi and uh, let fi and ei refer to the fetch and execute steps for the instruction i okay so here you can clearly see in the uh, slide so this is a sequential execution there are instructions i1 i2 and i3 so every instruction i a uh, fetch phase and execute phase so when the fetch and instruction execution of uh, instruction 1 is been done only then the uh, 
uh, instruction 2 is allowed to get executed and si similarly next in sequential execution i 3 instruction i 3 is said to be executed right. So, this is fetch plus execution. So, this is called as a sequential mode. So, whereas you are going to uh, here in the figure B you are going to see the hardware organization here a small modification is been applied here see it where you can see this instruction fetch phase and the instruction uh, uh, execution unit. So, here the interstage so between there are separate units for instruction fetch phase and the instruction decode uh, sorry execution phase right. So, here the there is a buffer buffer to hold the instructions that have been fetched ok. So, here uh, how this is going to help how this particular setup is going to help can be understood here in the C, uh, C figure which is called as the pipeline execution. So, what happens in the pipeline execution as you can see here. So, in the pipeline execution the instruction i it is going to begin at the, the instruction i 1 it is going to get started at clock cycle 1 f 1 and e 1 ok. So, this f 1 uh, what is f 1 fetch for the cycle for the instruction 1 fetch phase of instruction 1 followed by execution phase right. So, now in the sequential you can see that only after execution of first instruction is been completed. So, then only second one can begin, but whereas in a pipeline execution see here uh, at when <coughs> in the instruction 1 ok instruction 1 uh, fetch phase is beginning at uh, clock cycle 1 and uh, uh, here uh, for the instruction I 2 the fetch phase is beginning at the clock cycle 2 only without the need for waiting until the uh, 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 execution of instruction 1 is said to be completed right. So, this is what the pipeline execution here the instruction uh, that is the uh, fetch of this uh, I 2 is overlapped with the execution of the E 1. If you are going to take in the cycle 2 see what you can see in the cycle 2 here at uh, clock cycle 2 E 1 F 2 ok E 1 F 2 that is you are going to uh, see that while uh, instruction 1 is getting executed F 2 is getting fetched right. So, similarly while E 2 is getting uh, this, this thing it is getting executed F 3 will be fetched. So, right how this particular buffer is being uh, hold. So, whenever the instruction is getting uh, fetched, so it will be stored in the buffer B 1 right. So, this particular buffer so the while uh, this instruction execution unit what does it do? It will take the input from uh, it will take the instructions that were fetched and it starts executing. So, therefore, you can see that in a two stage uh, network like this stage 1 for instruction a unit and stage 2 for the execution unit there was one buffer B 1 ok. So, we need not uh, execute the instruction in only two stages. So, it can in order to get a better performance we can just make it a four stage pipeline. So, that is uh, one of the important question four stage pipeline ok. Okay, so, here the um, whatever the I explained in the slide. So, computers have two separate hardware units one for fetching and another for executing instruction fetched by the fetch unit is deposited in an intermediate buffer B 1. So, this buffer is needed to enable the execution uh, unit while the fetch unit uh, fetches the next uh, instruction ok. So, this coordination uh, in order to see that uh, the instructions are getting executed in a pipeline fashion the intermediate uh, interstage buffer is said to be introduced ok. So, next uh, the computer uh, the computer is controlled by a clock any instruction fetch and execute steps completed in one CPU one clock cycle ok. So, now this uh, figure illustrates it is a four stage pipeline. So, it is called as a four stage pipeline. So, what is the four stage pipeline here? So, this uh, the figure illustrates it is a four stage pipeline. So, instruction execution is divided into 
four steps here. Instead of two steps, it is divided into four stage pipeline. It is divided into four steps. What are those four steps here? Okay, uh, instead of just uh, instruction fetch and execute, it is being divided into fetch phase, uh, decode phase, execute phase, write back phase. So, F is for fetch. Okay, so what is a, a fetch decode? D for decode, and this this is for E is for execute. Okay, execute and writing the results. Okay, so W is for writing the results. So every instruction it is being divided into the four stages. Okay, so instruction one fetch, decode, execute, and write back. So, here the number of clock cycles are represented here and the time and the instruction 1, 2, 3 and 4 instruction execution is divided into two steps. So, in the previous example we have seen the instruction execution was divided into two stage it is called as a two stage pipeline and if it is divided into four uh, stages it is called as a four stage pipeline. So, what are the four stages? Fetch, decode, execute and write back. So, here what happens? Uh, instruction 1 it is initiated uh, during the clock cycle 1 ok fetch uh, decode execute and write back. So, these are the different uh, what we call uh, different uh, uh, stages of a single instruction while this is getting uh, decoded. So, instruction I 2 is going to begin its execution and similarly I 3 and uh, next I 4. So, in while if you are going to see here in the column wise no two uh, is belonging to the same thing. That means, uh, there is no overlapping, no two instructions get executed at the same time. We are going to, uh, uh, we are going, uh, the pipeline execution uh, we, uh, uh, tells that <coughs> we have to uh, see there is no clash in this particular execution units, ok, because there is a single execution unit, but the arrangement is made to hold, uh, to overlap the execution units, right. So, here after understanding how this is a four stage uh, a pipeline, so there uh, uh, what is the hardware organization that is uh, implemented in order to, uh, in order to implement this particular, what is the hardware modification that is uh, there in order to uh, implement the four stage pipeline. So, here we are having the hardware organization. So, we are having the fetch instruction, decode, execute and the write back. All the four stages are carried out in different sections, ok, in different segments and we are having the buffer, three stage buffers are there here, interstage buffers, these are called as B1, B2 and B3, right. So, what is this buffer B1? At any clock cycle, if you are going to see, at the clock cycle, for example, B4, four, what happens here? What is there in B1? So, B1 is holding the ad, uh, instruction at, uh, for example, clock cycle 4, if you take. So, what happens in the uh, stage B1? The and I3, ok, I1, I2, I3 instructions have already been fetched that will be stored in the instruction uh, fetch that will be stored in the uh, buffer B1 and which can be used up by the instruction decode and the fetch operands here, ok. So, uh, by the end of uh, fourth cycle, our fetch and the results, uh, it will be holding the final I1 value uh, because I1 is said to be completed by the fourth, ok, clock cycle 4 you can see here. So, this particular buffer B3 will be holding uh, the uh, results of uh, uh, this particular, ok, it will be holding the uh, executed results of uh, what we call the instruction I1, ok, and then uh, results will be, uh, it will be executed, uh, content will be used up by the uh, write back result, ok. So, this is what we call it as a four stage pipeline where intermediate uh, interstate buffers have been used to facilitate the pipeline execution of a four stage pipeline, right. So, here uh, the next concept what we are going to see here is right four stage pipeline as I told you it is being divided into four stages fetch read the instruction from the memory decode
code, decode the instruction and fetch the source operand, execute, what does it do? Perform the operation specified by the instruction and uh, write back, uh, write back that is store the result in the uh, destination location. Okay. So, these are the operations that will be carried out for every instruction in a four stage pipeline. Right. So, role of a cache, what is the significance of a cache memory here? So, why the ca what is the uh, role of the cache in the main memory, right. So, uh, if we want to understand the role of the cache here, uh, we, sh we should go back to the previous slide here, ok. Right. So, if we are going to see here, every it is assumed that every instruction gets executed in uh, one clo uh, CPU clock cycle, in one clock cycle. Okay, it is uh, executed that every stage is assumed to be completed in one clock uh, cycle. But what happens if the required instruction is not available? Okay, so when uh, the uh, this particular pipelining is uh, working fine, un uh, unless and until if all the data is readily uh, data and the instructions are readily available in the cache memory, right? So, when we have seen already the architectural development in the previous uh, architecture while we are discussing the cache, if there is a cache miss or uh, the uh, if there is a cache miss, what happens uh, every time the data whenever the content is getting executed in the processor, if the data is not available in our cache, so it has to go to the main memory. Imagine if all the content, uh, uh, if every instruction here, if it is not placed in the cache, every time the instruction needs to be fetched from the main memory, right. So, fetching the instructions from the main memory, it may not take uh, that uh, single cycle, it may take every uh, one instruction may take two cycles and another instruction. So, it is going to vary, ok. So, then the performance of the pipeline is going to degrade, right. So, therefore, if we introduce the cache memories here, what happens? Whatever the cache, whatever the particular content that will be needed by the processor, if it is uh, got into the memory, so this uh, so into the cache memory, so it can be made available, readily available for the processor whenever it requires during the execution of each thing, right. So, accessing uh, the uh, uh, cache memory, the number of clock cycles needed to access the cache memory is more or less equal to the uh, uh, number of clock cycles needed to access the register. So, uh, with that intention, what happens? Uh, the pipeline uh, degradation, the pipeline, the problem of pipeline degradation can be resolved with the introduction of what you call the cache memory. So, that is the reason why uh, in order to increase the pipeline performance, we are going to use uh, the uh, pipelining, uh, the concept of caches into the pipelining, ok. So, next to proceed, right. So, here uh, every pipeline stage is expected to complete in one clock cycle as I mentioned the clock period should be long enough to let the slowest pipeline stage to complete. So, what happens here? So, the pipeline, the uh, whatever the clock period should be defined uh, in such a way that the slowest pipeline stage will also be able to complete its uh, task, ok. Faster stages can only wait for the slowest ones to complete. So, with the introduction of the cache as I have explained, the problem of uh, this uh, waiting, uh, the pipeline degradation can be uh, can be resolved to certain extent with the introduction of what you call the cache memories into the pipelining. Okay, so the potential increase in performance resulting from pipelining is uh, directly proportional. So next is the concept of uh, the pipeline performance. So the uh, we are now required to study the last topic uh, related to the module 4, uh, sorry module 5 which is called uh, pipeline performance. How the performance uh, is uh, being affected when there are certain, uh, uh, when there are uh, 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 stalls, so something called as a stalls if they uh, are introduced in the pipeline, how the performance hinders, so that is being discussed.
discussed here okay so coming to the topic pipeline performance the potential increase in performance uh, resulting from pipelining is proportional to the number of pipeline stages okay so increase so what what do you mean by this particular statement here the increase in performance resulting from pipelining is directly proportional to the number of stages okay so how many stages are there uh, the uh, here uh, pipeline performance can be directly proportional whether it is performance is good or uh, not good can be it is directly proportional to the number of pipeline stages four pipeline stage or eight pipeline stage like that so if this uh, statement will be valid provided if every stage here what do you mean by every stage here uh, every stage that is each phase here it is going to take the same every stage here it is going to say, uh, take the same cpu clock cycle f1 should take one clock cycle d d code should take one clock cycle e1 uh, should take one clock cycle and e uh right back also should take uh, one clock cycle only then how many stages are there it is uh, equivalent to the number of stage the performance depends upon the number of stages okay but in case if any one of the stage here if it is going to take more cpu cycles here so then there will be a problem with the uh, pipeline with the performance issues of the pipeline okay so this uh, the potential increase in performance resulting from uh, pipelining is proportional to the number of stages so increase would be achieved only if all the pipeline stages require the same time to complete that is same number of cpu clock cycles but this is not true because certain instructions may require larger uh, cpu clock cycles and certain may not require certain for example the floating point instructions may take more time when compared to integer arithmetic instructions okay so uh, th because, because this is not true so there is a pipeline issue okay there is something uh, called as the hazards being introduced into the pipelining so as you can see here uh, some empty in the uh, clock cycle i1 uh, in the instruction uh, execution i1 i2 i3 i4 i5 effect of instruction operation taking more than one clock cycle see here uh, the i2 uh, i2 uh, d2 uh, e2 e2 execution of the second instruction is going to take uh, more cycles here okay so it is taking not one cycle more cycles four to six it is going to take because it may happen due to the non availability of the operands so therefore now what happens uh, this particular uh, Uh, non availability of the uh, operands resulting into this particular hazard okay so this is called as the uh, this empty cycles which are introduced so this we call it as a hazard okay D uh, there are different forms of hazards uh, that are there okay so uh, we shall so these are the empty cycles which are introduced these are called as the uh, Uh, it is called as the bubbles or the empty uh, it is called as the uh, empty stalls okay so next uh, pipeline is said to have been stalled for two cycles so as we have seen any condition that causes a pipeline to stall is called as a hazard so as we have seen in the previous case there are three types of uh, the empty cycles which are introduced in the pipeline so that is called as a hazard the data hazard uh, there are three types of hazards that we have seen data hazard instructional hazard and the structural hazard okay sir in a one to five minutes ide sir aagu bodutha mugusu okay so um, i repeat any condition that causes a pipeline to stall is called as a hazard so there are three types of hazards called as the data hazard instructional hazard and structural hazard okay so now we shall see what is the data hazard data hazard has you have seen if any one of the data if any of the operand during the execution of an instruction if it is missing so then that introduces a data hazard okay so as we have seen in the previous slide so 
So, one of the operand uh, in the previous case the particular data okay, for executing the operand uh, for executing the instruction it was missing and that comprises of uh, the data hazard. Okay. So, next uh, instruction hazard. So, instruction hazard can be illustrated in this particular slide. So, where you are having the clock cycle, uh, these are the clock cycles uh, over the period of time instruction I 1, I 2 and I 3 instruction execution steps in successive clock cycles. Okay. So, here what happens uh, the it is a four stage pipeline stage fetch, decode, execute and write back. So, here what happens uh, the particular uh, while the instruction um, uh, there is an existence of uh, instruction hazard the instruction is not available in the cache. So, therefore, it is a cache miss problem. Okay. So, here instruction I 1 is readily uh, fetched. So, decode is execute decode phase is being carried out and execution and followed by write up. So, whereas here I 2 the instruction is missing in the cache. So, therefore, now what happens this instruction needs to be got from the fetched from the main memory and then it has to be loaded into the processor if it is missing in the cache. So, therefore, there is a delay of uh, these many cycles because the instruction needs to be fetched from the main memory. So, this is called as the instruction hazard when the required instruction is not found. So, there it uh, there is a number of empty cycles or bubbles introduced into this particular cycle in, in the fetch phase. right? So, the decode whenever an uh, empty cycle is being introduced the other cycles uh, following in the instruction will also be delayed. Okay. So, this is what called as the therefore, the performance of the system is said to uh, degrade here. Why? Because you can see here as the empty, uh, uh, empty cycles are introduced that the number of clock cycles needed to execute the whole set of instructions it is going to increase. So, that is the reason why there should be an effective means to uh, handle the hazards whether it be a data hazard, instruction hazard or the uh, structural hazard. Okay. So, uh, okay. so I again repeat what do you mean by data hazard? Whenever the required data is missing, it is not available for the instruction to be executed. So, that is called as the uh, data hazard and instruction required instruction if it is not available it is called as the structure instruction hazard and structural hazard when both of them two instructions are trying to use up the same hardware at the same time uh, that leads to a structural hazard. Okay. So, here the decode unit is ideal in 3 to 4 execute unit ideal. So, here you can see ideal which are the phases ideal here. Okay. Ideal phases are represented here. Okay. So, that is the what we call here the ideal periods are called as the stalls or the bubbles. So, function performed by each stage in successive clock cycles. So, whenever the particular um, uh, this thing instruction is missing empty cycles are introduced and that is called as the decode that is called as the ideal or the buffer. Okay. Ideal or we call it as a stalls or the bubbles. So, which is uh, which needs to be handled effectively. right? So, now there is a structural hazard. So, there is another problem called as the structural hazard. So, what do you mean by the structural hazard? See here structural hazard as you know this uh, as I told both the uh, things both the operations both the instructions are going to refer to the same uh, resource here hardware resource. So, that leads to a structural hazard. So, in this particular example, so here here having the I 1, I 2, I 3, I 4, I 5. So, load x of R 1 comma R 2. What is this one? It is a indexed addressing mode. The contents of R 1, you are adding an offset x to the contents of register R 1 okay, uh, to generate the effective address of the, of the operand and um, that uh, okay and that value is loaded into the register r2 so now what happens here you can see in the instruction e i1 uh, the particular uh, 
write the particular in the instruction I1. So, here uh, uh, fetch phase uh, decode execute and write back phases have been carried out. Whereas, in I2 while the load instruction uh, in the load instruction. So, this part is being carried out. So, here ok. So, M2 and write back ok. So, wh when the both E2 here uh, in this particular stage M2 it is going to access the register R1 ok and writing the result into R2 ok and writing the result is also is going to take place right. Here both of them uh, in this particular instruction. So, what happens uh, here uh, particular you can see even the I3 is going to make use of the particular uh, same registers in the both I2 and I3 the same instructions will be same registers will be used for uh, loading and for uh, executing the operation. So, this is called as a structural hazard ok. So, I repeat what happens when a structural hazard is created when two instructions are referring to the same uh, to the same resource at the same time. You can see here this particular result is writing to uh, R 1 ok. So, first instruction is writing to R 1 and even this uh, in the I 2 also the results are uh, getting updated because <coughs> for adding x uh, of R 1 right. So, this is an example of structural hazard ok. So, uh, so all these mean, means uh, needs to be uh, handled effectively the data hazard structural hazard and uh, the uh, the data hazard structural hazard and uh, the other form of uh, hazard ok uh, date uh, ok. So, this structural hazard uh, all these techniques needs to be handled effectively uh, and uh, that is called as a mechanisms for handling the hazards anyhow that is not part of the syllabus. So, uh, we are going to stop here. So, next pipeline performance. So, how you are going to solve and improve the pipeline performance. So, pipelining does not result in individual instructions being executed faster. So, rather it is a throughput that increases ok. What do you mean by a throughput? Throughput is measured by the rate at which the instruction execution is said to be completed. The rate at which the instruction execution is said to be completed. So, pipeline stall causes the degradation in the pipeline stalls are uh, going to be causing the uh, decrease in the performance of the pipeline as we have seen. So, how because there is a drastic increase in the uh, number of uh, CPU clock cycles the pipeline stall causes the degradation in the pipeline performance. So, therefore, we need to effectively identify all the hazards that results and plan effectively and that uh, which leads to uh, and uh, we have to solve and devise the methods to handle the hazards ok. So, therefore, we need to identify all the hazards that may cause pipeline to stall and to find ways to minimize their impact ok. So, this so, we have completed all the modules uh, that uh, related to this particular we have done with the module 5 ok. We have discussed initially um, the uh, we have discussed initially the basic processing unit and lastly we have ended up with the pipelining ok. So, I am uh, thankful to VTU e Shikshana program for uh, giving me this opportunity and uh, for all the other relevant material you can uh, try to refer the